We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, Stiff Farm going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the side. Line. This is the 49er Faithful UK show. And this is week three versus the LA Rams. An awesome London watch party went some way to soften the blow of a disappointing loss in Minnesota. But what better opportunity to respond than a visit to Levi South and the first division matchup against the Rams, who were beat up and were beaten up by the Cardinals in week two. I'm Gareth Ellis, and after a week that started with Frank Gore and then moved swiftly on to Patrick Willis, we are brought back down to earth with a bump as I'm joined by our very own Hall of Famers. It's Paul Hope. What's up, Fairfall? And Lee Gowland. What's up, guys? Good to see you again. Seems like only only a few days ago that I saw you. That is correct, buddy, and it was a pleasure to see you and actually get to talk to you amongst the madness of the watch party. I know we yeah, grabbed briefly. five minutes, and I even got a photo with Gareth Lee. Yeah, yeah. I made it a mission you're lucky, to you lucky man so it was great go. to see everybody at the watch party uh, we're not going to dwell on it too much because there will be a watch party uh, special show that will be coming out very soon uh, when we sort it out speaking of shows um, you had a guest on Wednesday on the live anyone interesting Jordan Spectre he was quite nice. good yeah. yeah Jordan was quite interesting mm. So that's good to hear for the people who may not know the background, we'll say quickly, Gareth. So Jordan Spector is the artist who is working with Patrick and the trading card that we've been asked to help promote. And 20 minutes before we went live last night, I got a text message off Jordan asking if Patrick Willis could jump on the show at some point. So I texted Lee. <laughs> Me and Lee started to panic a little bit 20 minutes before we go live. Um, Jordan jumped on the show he was uh, a great guest to have on. He jumped off the show. We started the Vikings review. And then in the middle of the Vikings review, me and Lee suddenly get the notification that Patrick Willis is waiting backstage to be let on the show. So, yes, Gareth, I think he was after your job, if I'm being honest, buddy. What do you reckon, Lee? Mm. He was pretty good as host, I will, Patrick. Yeah, well, he was uh, pretty good as host. Yeah, he definitely well, knew what he was doing. Well, there you go. Yeah, That's very impressive. <laughs> But people can catch the uh, recording of the live show, I guess, on yeah. the YouTube channel. They can, and they can also listen to it on a wow. podcast. So I spent five hours today editing that podcast. So we got all excited well because he did mention 49 of Faithful UK. And we thought, oh, we'd be able to use that video. We, we'd be able to put it on um, a YouTube show, TikTok, do, a, do an Instagram reel. Um, and then the realization kicked in that because he'd left the studio before it, fu- it finished uploading, we wouldn't have that. So we would be able to pull it off the, the main the main video or the main audio. But what that meant was, because at times we were talking over each other, I had to chop you. original audio and take the uh, stream audio. So anybody that listens to the podcast will notice there's a drop off in audio quality when Patrick Willis comes on fr- from all of us. So the volumes will change and it might sound a little bit tinny because that was um, recorded in, as an MP3 file, whereas we normally record ours as a WAV file. So that took a lot of um, fixing to get that right. Excellent work, Lee. You, uh, you do us proud with the uh, technicalities that go straight over my head. So yeah, it's, it Whoosh. sounds good. It sounds good. But so clearly you work in tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You make it sound good. Just use words people doesn't understand and uh, you'll be fine. So, shall we crack on with the week three preview? Uh, injury report, let's start there because the uh, the Rams, this could take us half the show, but um, I shall try not to hide my smile. But uh, the Rams injured reserve list, i.e. the guys who are definitely not where close to playing, there's three offensive, four offensive linemen on that list, three cornerbacks, a safety, um, and the small matter of a guy called Puka Nakua. Um, they're pretty banged up. They're also going to be missing Cooper Cup. Didn't practice this week. Another cornerback, Kobe uh, Durant. Tight end, David Allen. And kicker, Joshua Carty. Um, not familiar names, but they have got quite an injury list. For the Niners, 
Things aren't looking so bad as they looked a few weeks ago. CMC, obviously a big loss. And Debo, sure, we've all heard about, picked up a knock against Minnesota. So they will be out. But on the positive side, Talanoa Hafanga has been practicing um, and has been uh, uh, full practice, unlimited in practicing. Um, big losses for us, but probably bigger losses for the Rams. Thoughts on those injuries before we look at the matchup? Who 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 are we going to lose? Who who are we going to miss? I think we're definitely going to miss Debo because I think that's going to shape how the offense looks going forward over the next couple of weeks. Um, we have been playing a lot of three wide receiver sets. I expect that to change for the next couple of weeks. I expect us to play a lot of uh, twenty one personnel. I think Juice is going to be on the field almost every down, if I'm honest, mm. because if he's not then we're going to be looking at um, Ayuk Jennings and probably Ronnie Bell. And that doesn't fill me full of confidence at all. Mm-hmm. Paul? Yeah. So, yeah, I think Debo's going to be a miss. Mm. Well, to be fair, Lee, we've not played a game without both missing for over 18 months now. So we've yeah. either had CMC or we've either had Debo Samuel. Shanahan himself said on Wednesday, chaps, that the playbook won't necessarily shrink, but the way he calls players without those dynamic playmakers will change. We've all seen CMC in the slot, Debo in the jet sweep motion. It keeps the defences honest because they don't know what's going to happen. That said, the Rams are pretty beat up, so their offensive line, as you said, Gareth, is definitely an area that when we discuss the matchups, I've got some stats for you. But it just goes to show the NFL week two, we would be more than losing CMC. We would be more than Samuel. And then you look at the Rams injury list and you think, wow, we're fairly lucky that we've got a lot of our starters. Mm. So I'm not as despondent as Lee, mainly because we've got George Mason. Uh, I think we could see Jacob Cowlin, maybe his features a little bit more, Lee. Maybe he could get that kind of Debo decoy role where he's using the backfield for the motions, the jet sweeps, to keep those linebackers for the Rams guessing. Because it's going to be interesting, McVay going, going up against Shanahan. You know we all like to do the trick players. I just wonder whether Jennings is going to be on one of your bold predictions because we've seen CMC mm. throw for a touchdown, run for a touchdown and catch a touchdown. Maybe Juwan could earn you some pennies this weekend, El Presidente. Potentially, possibly. Yeah. possibly. And you have actually nicked one of my bold predictions. <laughs> uh, no, 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 they're not my bold predictions. Already. I'm saying yeah. they're going to be yours. I'll stay no, away but, from you, yeah, But you have, yeah, you have already mentioned it though. <laughs> so... Let's let's look at the matchup. I realise I didn't I didn't frame that particularly well. Of course, we're going to miss uh, uh, CMC and Debo. I I was actually I didn't get my words out. I was it was more like who are the Rams going to miss? But let's let's talk about that on the matchups. Uh, I think um, Lee bragged that he had a graphic ready um, before we started the show. So it's uh, it's Lee's time to shine. If you're watching on YouTube, um, the Rams offense and how it lines up against the Niners D. So the Rams offense without Cooper cup, without Pook and the click is possibly missing a little bit of firepower. Um, obviously a bit of a battered O line as well. Big test for Matt Stafford, um, and a big opportunity for the Niners D, uh, Lee takes away. Yeah, I mean, you have to have a look at that left-hand side of the offensive line there, and you've got to think that that that's going to be uh, that's going to bear fruit for Nick Bosa. Um Jackson. I think he's a two or a three-season player. Um, just inside him, Bruce, he's a rookie, so it, it's going to be interesting to see how those two handle Nick Bosa. Um, as you as you've mentioned, no Pook in the core because he hasn't got Pook in the core, who who is effectively. Um, the quick release for Stafford. Stafford might end up holding onto the ball a lot more. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the O-line manages our defensive uh, our defensive line. The right-hand side, the right tackle, he's a good player. Um, he's consistently good. So whether or not he can shore up... In fact, to be honest, I'm wondering whether or not they actually move him to left tackle. Yeah, and stick one of the yeah, uh, yeah, the more inexperienced shuffle. players over to right tackle, um, because obviously I mean left tackle is one of the most important um, positions on the on the offense, the the protected quarterback, 
Stafford, he's not as particularly mobile. He's going to need all the protection he he can get. Um, and without giving away my next ball prediction, mm-hmm. I, I think it's going to be a good game for ball, uh, for Bosa. Mm-hmm. You possibly what have you think, given Paul? a little bit away. Paul? Yeah, when I was preparing for tonight, chaps, there's several things wrong with this Rams offence at the moment. Lee's alluded to the beat-up offensive line. They're not able to run the ball, Gareth. They've got no consistency. They're ranked 31st in the NFL at the moment. They're last in all metrics of rushing yards, yards per carry through the two games. And Lee, when Stafford's trying to throw the ball, he's just been getting pressured quickly because they're not protecting him. They've allowed 29 total pressures in two games, which is the fifth worst in the NFL. They've allowed seven sacks, which is the third most, likely. That's going to feature in my bold prediction. Now, the def- the offence for the Rams has been one-dimensional under McVeigh because with those dynamic wide receivers, chaps, he likes to play the 11 personnel. Like you said, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup. With them missing, I'm wondering whether this is going to be the week where McVeigh tries to outdo Shanahan by going into the 12 personnel. He's got three healthy tight ends. We know how tight ends can help a beat-up offensive line if you put them on the edge to kind of block those pass rushes. So, I mean, they're not superstar. The three names I've got is Kobe Parkinson, Hunter Long, and Darius Allen, if healthy. But it wouldn't surprise me if we see a three tight end set or if we see the 12 personnel, as I've said there. I also feel that... How how dare you say Kobe Parkinson's not elite? He's from Stanford. Of course he's elite. (laughs) See, this is where if Nadji was here, I'd have set you off against yeah. each other. Do you know when I looked down when I said that, Lee? Do, do, do you was... like my rose-tinted glasses? <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah, absolutely perfect. You, you know he's listening and raging right now. <laughs> he is. He will be. But you asked, Gareth, who would they miss? And I think they're going to miss the two. They're going to miss Cooper Cup and they're mm. going to miss Puka Nakua because obviously, as Lee said, they're the kind of Stafford safety um, valves. And running the ball out with the 11 personnel with Robinson... Johnson, Whittington, or even Tutu Atwell, doesn't come easily. And when I've been doing the research this afternoon, the Rams forums, the Rams fans, are just writing this game off. They're like, Kyle Shanahan is rolling into town. Our team is beat up. So, like you said, at the moment, I was preparing this at 2 o'clock this afternoon. The game plan hinged on Cooper Cup. Now, I don't know whether he's out or not. I think if Cooper Cup is on the field, maybe we see what the Rams do traditionally. But if he's not... I think McVeigh's going to have to do something different. And if you can't run the ball and your quarterback is forced to pass and if your O-line's not protecting him, that, for me, is going to be a key matchup on Sunday. We need our elite Nick Bosa, as Lee said there, to get through. And I want to see those pressures and I want to see those sacks because we've got a bold prediction at the start of the season that we need those sacks adding up. Yeah, totally. See, see. So, sorry, sorry, for, for no, me, Paul, I mean, full flow. yeah, I, I completely agree that Putin Accord and Cooper Cup's going to be a huge miss. They, they are excellent players. We've seen that uh, over the seasons, obviously, Putin Accord for one season, and um, but it was an excellent season. But you, you forget, Matt Stafford is a really good quarterback. Mm. He can get the ball out to any receiver he, he needs to get the ball out to. But the point is, or the, the problem he's going to have is, he's not going to have the time to do that this time. Yeah, that's what so I was meaning. Had he had pressure on him and stuff. So Yeah. Had he had Cooper Cup and Putin the court, he might have been able to get the ball out because he trusted them a little bit more. Um, but I think he's going to be under a lot of pressure. I think he's going to have to make really quick decisions. And to be honest, I don't think it really matters who he's got as wideouts because he's going to be under that much pressure. I, I think it's the all line for me. That's going to be the biggest miss for the Rams. I agree. Having I just think that with, beaten up, um, with those, those two not playing, it's a bit like when we have George Kittle in the blocking game. So, uh, Cup and Makua have bought into that scheme. Well. And what I mean is, McVeigh's scheme is going to be a lot different. And then if they're not running the ball very well, so obviously I think the running back, if I get his name right, uh, Williams, K- Kinran Williams, he's like 32nd ranked quarter, uh, running back at the moment. Yeah. He's just not running the ball. And it's made the Rams one-dimensional, which plays into our hands mm. personally. Yeah. So when we get round to talking about what we need to do to beat the Rams, remind me about what you said about Kittle there. Kittle and his blocking. Why? Oh no, we'll we'll, we'll do it later on. 
Just yeah, well, he's, us. he's, Just he's saving that. He's saving that. Uh, yeah. Good overview there, gents. I think one of those key things is potentially going to be um, the deployment of the tight ends. You would potentially think Mc, um, McVeigh's going to look at this and thinking, okay, can I get Stafford into a rhythm of short passes? Can I uh, yeah, use running backs? Can I use tight ends for some of those short passes over the middle? Uh, and then you look at where we feast and it's it's Fred Warner. I think Matt Stafford's job is going to be find Fred Warner and try and find somewhere away from him where there's a short pass. I think it could be a bit picking on uh, Devondre uh, Campbell, who possibly didn't have uh, his greatest game against Minnesota. I think people will be looking that as a, as a weak link. I think anywhere that's not Fred Warner could be termed as, as a weak link, given the form he's in. And I think they will try and uh, attack us that way and then possibly try and take the top off uh play like two to atwell they still still got a bit of speed there um and everybody saw uh sam darnold score a 99 yard or throw a 99 yard touchdown um against us and i think people are going to think okay maybe if i can hit one of those early i'm going to force the niners to sit a little bit deeper and then I might find a little bit of space um, at the back. I know we didn't really have a chance to to digest the Minnesota game too much. There is a bit of talk about how the uh, secondary struggled in that game. Do you think that's going to give the Rams some hope? They're trying to attack us perhaps a little deeper? Mm, stunned silence. Yeah, well, I mean, anytime you see your, your next opponents beaten the week before, You've got to be able to take something out of that game tape. So they'll have looked at that, looked at exactly what Minnesota were doing, how they were doing it, uh, and try and replicate that. The, the problem is, it might not have been what Minnesota was doing. It just might have been a lack of execution on our behalf. Mm. And if the lack of execution, you can guarantee Shanahan's going to change that coming into this game against the Rams. And th- this is going to be a theme throughout this whole podcast. That was the problem in Minnesota. That was a large part of the problem. Um, so as I said off, um, off camera last night, I, I, I had to get up at uh, quarter to two this morning to go to the, uh, the Niner Empire, um, president's meeting. And in that meeting, they'd actually got Johnny Dell to come in and do a presentation on, um, the Minnesota Vikings game, uh, mainly because there's so many people calling for, Kyle Shanahan's head, seeing he was completely outcoached. So Johnny Dell had all these uh, these videos set up. He had a telestrator there, and he explained each one of these players that broke down as far as the 49ers were concerned. And he was able to do it in such a way where he could show you had the player worked, had, had the had the players executed the player the way it should have been done, we wouldn't have lost that game. It was down to poor execution. And he explained why the particular player would have, would have either stopped their offense or it would have gone for uh, um, a first down or a touchdown. So it was interesting to read that mm. or to listen to it because I, I think there was somewhere in the region of um, 30 people on this call and everybody went silent. <laughs> <laughs> As we were watching cool. him break it down, and it was really good. Mm. And I would recommend you, you do follow um, Johnny Dell on both um, Twitter and on YouTube because he does do a very good breakdown. Mm, definitely, and it was quite a professional way to do it as well. I think it was an eye opener, definitely. I, I think for me, Gareth, what stood out with that play, the Jefferson play, was the fact that we tried to cover him with a pair of safeties, which neither are known for the speed. And like Lee said there, I think Johnny Dell will have done the breakdown. Some of the soft shell coverage when we're in that kind of cover two, cover six. And the fact that we, I said it last night, Mr. Gore tapped me on the shoulder because he thought it was going to be three and out. And we were heading from the VIP area down the stairs when Sam Darnold let that ball fly. And then when Jefferson snagged it, he is an elite receiver. He still had some work to do. But you just saw how quickly he put the afterburners on and he went past them. And I know to Sean Gibson isn't been a great loss as such. But I think quietly what he did behind the scenes the last couple of years has maybe he's been exposed. Obviously, we're missing Hafanga. And I do think the game tape of that, as Lee said, I think when the players have got back to Santa Clara, 
and the coaching staff have gone through. That'll be mm. one player. I think it was the longest player in the NFL since 2022. It certainly changed the momentum. Um, it definitely changed the momentum at the watch party. But overall, I don't think we were absolutely terrible. I mean, I don't know if you've watched the game back, Gareth. I left it 24 hours and then watched it back without the emotion. And some of the stuff, like Lee said, it was just poor play execution, which can't be on the coaching staff. So, Yeah, it it looked a bit of early early season rust and some of those uh, uh, plays don't don't come off. Maybe we, perhaps luck's not the right word, but thing, things perhaps went our way against the Jets where you didn't get punished uh, maybe for for that early season rust as a lot of teams were uh, in week two because there were some strange results around the league. And it's it's that time, time of the season. And I think you look at some of the stats, particularly uh, our almost 400 yards of offense uh, again. Um, Brock Purdy, I think, is is basically top of the quarterback tables. Jordan Mason's top of the running back tables. You think, how, how have we lost this game? Um, I think the Viking, it comes down to a couple of things. There's, there's one stat that matters, and that's how many points you score. But I think instead of all the yardage and all the other things, two things that always matter are turnovers and third down. And it's it's what we convert and what we allow converted. And I think that that was it. It was just it's that poor execution. And the Vikings played well. The Vikings are probably better than people expected. And I think they they played a, a not only a good game plan, but they executed. It's not like Sam Darnold is is suddenly turned into Patrick Mahomes. He didn't actually do anything. Uh, one great pass. But he didn't do anything that was amazing. He executed what he was asked to do. Same thing that Brock Purdy does week after week. So it's, yeah, it, I don't see it as necessarily a bad thing getting a, a punch in the nose early on in the season. I think it gets the players to work hard uh, and realise that you, nothing's given to you. They know that. We've got so much experience. Those players know, know that. Um, but yeah, this is chance for a get right game. Uh, do you want to talk about your George Kittle point, or should we have a look at the uh, how we're going to line up against the Rams' defense? Well, we can do that both at the same time. Both, both at the same so, time, multitasking. Take time. it away. Multitasking, not like me, is it? Um, so, I, as I said before, I, I'm expecting us to line up in 21 personnel quite quite a lot over the next two weeks. Um, so, I'm expecting to see uh, a huge dose of juice on there. Um, but going over to the Kittle point again, so Johnny Dell, when he was breaking this down, um, he showed a couple of, um, believe it or not, um, broken, broken blocks by Kittle where he'd missed the blocking assignment and it allowed the pressure to get through, which meant, uh, Purdy had to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker than uh, he wanted to. And these were on third down as well. So it ended up being, um, we were coming off the field. And again, another one where, Kittle wasn't blocking, but he was supposed to be running a particular route. He didn't run the route the way it should have been run. And because of that, it stopped a, a guaranteed first down because Purdy couldn't get the ball through to um, through to Ayuk, who was crossing the field. And that's when he kind of ran out and, and tried to scramble and ended up uh, half a yard short. So you look at the start and you think, oh, George Kittle's had a good game today. 76 yards, touchdown. Fantastic. But then you see Johnny Dell break it down. So well, actually, he, he's made a complete mess of these two blocks. And then on this route, he's caused us to miss getting the ball into Ajax hands. Um, and to be honest, that was kind of, um, that was the theme throughout the offense. Just people here and there missing simple assignments that they had. So they weren't executing. And it was completely different to the game against the Jets, especially on defense. I mean, defense were, were excellent last week. But against the Vikings, you thought it was a completely different team other than Fred and maybe Demo. I think Demo was our best cornerback on Sunday. So you had two players who you thought, they've played well on defense. The others, not so much. So the way to beat the Rams, and we know we've got the number and we're not as banged up as they are, which is fortunate. We need to execute. It's Bill Belichick. Do your job. 
if you do your job, we'll beat the Rams. I can guarantee it. Yeah, we, we're, we're better everywhere on paper, uh, Paul. Well, we used to say this quite a lot, Gareth. Mistake free football. and We haven't mentioned that phrase for a couple of weeks. And me and Lee touched upon it last night. You can't turn the ball over on the road multiple times, allow six sacks, gift your opponent mm. 10 points, blocked punt, fail to convert twice on fourth down and expect to win. The fact that Fred Warner made that game competitive was a Christmas miracle. But Gareth, I did not come here tonight to expect Club 85 slander. <laughs> However, I'll take off the rose-tinted glasses because we are on the show we are open to constructive criticism. And like you said, Lee, you shouldn't just go off the stats. And one thing that I have done these last couple of years since doing these pods with you guys is watching the game back, watching the game tape and seeing things like that. Like you said, Lee, quick glance, you think Kittle's had a good game. But it just goes to show in this wonderful sport of American football, if someone doesn't run the route correctly, someone misses a block. And that's one thing that you've said about um, Stafford, great quarterback but he hasn't got the time in the pocket at the moment and he hasn't got the weapons that he trusts. So, But yeah, Kittle, I, I think we'll see a bounce back game from George. I think he'll be the first to put the game tape on Lee and no, he's at fault. Um, we touched upon it last night. Fred Warner come at the podium and actually named himself as one of the players that needs to play better. I had to double take when I heard that interview. I was like, Fred needed to play better after watching that game back. That's, that's leadership for you. It is. Everybody's Fred. <laughs> yeah, I think the certainly the O line uh, struggled. I think we we talked uh, week one about how good the O line performance was against the Jets, and thought, "Oh, this is great." We were worried about the O line before the season started, as we usually are before the season starts. I think that they probably the Jets game flattered them, but I'm hoping that the Minnesota game that they're, they're better than they showed then. Uh, I think a good defensive scheme and, and a strong defensive line. Um, and as you said, a few uncharacteristic, I think, missed um, blocks there from Trent Williams. Again, possibly just that little bit of rust that he hasn't been practising. Um, and hopefully, I think there's a big opportunity for the O-line to put things right. Uh, not putting everything entirely on them, but they certainly didn't have a great game um, against the Vikings. Uh, and that's where... We talk about if you're losing the trenches, suddenly it doesn't matter how many yards of offense you seem to get, how many uh, good good plays or, or good quarterback plays you seem to get. Somehow you you end up leaving the field having lost, uh, and it's it's there. It's it's that was a good example, I think, of a trenches game. That's what happens if if a defensive line imposes themselves on you, it just suddenly becomes difficult to score points. Um, and I hope that that's something that they're, they're really going to to want to put right this week. I'll tell you what we talked about before we move off this topic. We talked about Flores and the master of disguise. And we talked about what he was going to do. He disguised his cover two, cover six. So Brock Purdy's taught if he sees a certain thing on the field, check it down to certain players. And they were dropping people into coverage. The linebackers were on fire. I mean, Van Ginkel nearly got another mm -hmm pick like he did against the Giants all of us in the bar were like why is Purdy throwing that ball there he was trying to do a, a quick uh, throw behind mm. the line of scrimmage and I think you've got to give the Vikings coaching staff credit on that side Lee. I think when they say out coach Shanahan I think Flores had a game plan um, he definitely put the pressure on Purdy Purdy saw some different things but like you said looking at the Rams the offensive line is beat up so I'm looking forward to seeing how we attack that Big opportunity, I think, for Ayuk. He's been quiet. It, time to show why he's worth thirty million. Well, well. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this time, uh, I've, I've been watching Eric Crocker because there was a lot of noise about Ayuk, um, how he's been dreadful since he came back. And Eric Crocker had five examples where Ayuk had uh, gained separation and the ball didn't come his way. Um, so he is getting separation, and he's getting separation against some good cornerbacks. Um, so he isn't getting, he is getting there, but obviously there was a couple of times where he should have done better with the ball and he didn't. And that is rust. So yeah, I, I think hopefully against the Rams, you're going to see Ayuk playing a lot more like what we saw last year. And I would say definitely the week after against the Patriots, he should be up to speed by then. Mm. Um, and as should all of the team. 
everybody should be game fit and playing at the top level. So uh, yeah, hopefully Ajax is going to ball out on Sunday night. I know you um, I got confused. I should be talking about our offence. So when I was looking at the <laughs> stats, Gareth, I mean, the, the Rams defence, the 31st in the NFL in, na- in net yards per play at minus 1.9. They've given up a staggering 9.3 yards per pass attempt, the most by a yard in the NFL. They're on a two-game losing streak, so they lost 26-20 to the Lions. And we thought our defeat was bad last week to the Vikings. They lost 41-10 to the Cardinals. Now, the Cardinals' run game, 231 yards, 5.8 yards per carry. And I think what we're going to see on Sunday is Kyle Shanahan go back to an old-school Kyle Shanahan game. Jordan Mason, power running up the middle, if we can get five yards per carry and then if Brock Purdy can get nine yards per pass attempt, and like Lee said, I do think Brandon Ayuk is in for a big game this week. I think it, the Rams' defensive line were missing tackles. Kyler Murray had on two of his three touchdowns, wait till you hear this stat, 8.5 seconds he had the ball in his hand on two of his three touchdowns. Now, we've seen what Brock can do when he has to do a play action or he has to come out of the pocket. We saw the connection with Ayuk Lee last year against Washington, where he's he's gesturing him to the backfield. That, for me, is going to be be key. Murray had five passing players of 20-plus yards versus the Rams' defence, and they were just able to impose their will. And I think we are a better team than the Cardinals, Mm. and I can't wait to see... Tough day at the office last week for first-year defensive coordinator, Chris Sula. Now, interestingly, Gareth, their defence plays very similar to Brandon Staley's Mm defence. Now, when you've got Brandon Staley in your coaching tree, I think what we're going to see is Brandon Staley should have the keys to, right, if this is the look, Brock, this is what they're doing. And it's quite eerily, when you look at the tapes, they're very similar. Um, His defence is very similar to the Chargers, that Staley ran last year. They don't blitz a lot, which I think is going to play into our hands. Um, they don't have the linebackers to play the true 4-3 that Staley likes to play. But obviously, you said it last week, with two games in, it's a small sample size. But I did go back and watch the Cardinals game versus the Rams. And there's Rams fans late. It wasn't pretty watching. It was good for me watching, but it wasn't for those. Sorry, Rams fans. Sorry, not sorry. Um, there's there's a bit of space, I suppose. There's an opportunity here with with CMC missing and Debo missing. It's it sometimes does frustrate me that that when we have these these guys out, we just tend to condense the offense down in into the reliable big name players. I I'm just I always want to see a chance for great Jacob Cowing or Chris Connolly, friend of the show, Chris Connolly, Isaac Garendo. Maybe somebody get a bit of an opportunity in a game like this. I don't think it's going to happen. Does it? Does that frustrate you? It always frustrates me. I, I disagree. I disagree. I Ooh. disagree, Gareth, because when I've looked at the game tape, the Rams have primarily become cover three, cover six defense. Their 21% rate in cover six is the highest in the NFL. And their cover three is at 46%. And when you look at the weaknesses of those two coverages, intermediate change of sp- uh, pace. So I think you could see Isaac Grendor used in a watered-down CMC role. So uh, Jordan Mason running the ball. But I think to kind of keep the Rams' defence guessing, you could use that speed of Grendor for the outside zone. Because obviously in cover six, they tend to have two high safeties. And they're relying a lot on those safeties to kind of crash down to help the run defence the run defence is non-existent. I think this is a game that Kyle Shanahan is going to be into that bag of tricks. So I disagree with you. I think it's going to be a big game for some of those receivers. Maybe Jennings, maybe Ayuk. Chris Conley, friend of the show, if he scores a touchdown on Sunday, we might break this card. I did, yeah, I didn't necessarily mean Ayuk and Jennings, the, the familiar names. It's it's those other guys that, that we haven't seen or, or rarely get a chance. Well, Eric Salbert had a couple of uh, a receptions, I think, against the Vikings, a couple of important ones, even though we lost, maybe not that important. Um, but I could see him hopefully being drawn into the game more. Um, but personally, I, I would love to see some of these guys getting a chance when there's injuries out. Um, but I, I don't believe it'll happen. It's not been Shanahan's form, has it? It hasn't. But the- yeah, I, 
Go on, sorry, Bob. Go on. No, I was just. Uh, so I agree. I agree, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree, Gareth. Uh, I, I think you're right. It hasn't been Shanahan's form to do that. He, he tends to want to use the players he's brought in f- through the draft. Um, I would love to see Chris Conley get mm. a, a bigger role with Debo being out. I can't see it, but if he does, I think that's a valuable weapon to have on offense. Mm. I'd Let rather be watching Chris Connolly than Ronnie Bell. That's for sure, because I trust Chris Connolly to catch the ball and keep all of it. Yeah, but didn't he give Connolly chances last year? So what I'm looking at the stats. So the the Rams are giving up an expl- explosive play rate on offense at 10.3 percent. They've allowed an explosive play rate of 14.6 percent. So they're those deep passes, and I think it was against the Lions. I remember Connolly catching a couple, dragging the toe, drag swag and keeping it in there. So whereas I don't think they're going to be the go-to, what I think Shanahan loves to beat McVeigh and he likes to sprinkle in the trick play. We, we reference CMC, which I know he's an elite NFL player, but I just think there's going to be something on Sunday that we'll be talking about on the pod, like, oh my God, did you see Kyle Shanahan do that? And it could be one of those people, because like you said, Gareth, whenever he goes up against McVeigh, he tends to have that kind of edge. I think it's nine out of the last 11 meetups where we've won. And I just mm. think this defence is struggling at the moment. They've, they've kind of gone back to what they did under Staley in 2020, but they haven't got the players to do that. And it just jumps off the page when you're looking into it. And I just think we're going to see some explosive players. The, the Russian attempts, the Rams are allowing a Russian success rate of 55.1%. And as I said, they're allowing five yards per carry. Add to the quarterback throw on nine yards per attempt on them. It's it's just a recipe for success. I think Kyle Shanahan's going to be looking forward to this one. Well, that summed it up nicely, Paul. I think we should move straight down into the meat of the show, the score predictions. The Niners are seven and a half point favourites on the road. That is huge. And the over-under is 43.5. Who is going to kick off? Usually the person who's leading on the uh, predictions table, um, which... It's it's very rarely or very entirely unlikely that it, it will be me. So I'm going to uh, tee up Paul first because it's probably him. Well, well, actually, Gareth, you're oh. wrong. It is you. Uh, you're yes, just, Gareth. It can't be me. Surely, surely, none of us got any points last week. I didn't even look, mate. No, you, <laughs> you definitely got points. I need to bring it up again, but you definitely got points. I think it's because one of the scores was quite close. Did to I? what you said it was going to be. Oh. I was a little preoccupied with yeah. uh, certain notifications on my phone last week, so yeah. I'll just. Okay, well, I'll... I will. I I'll go first. Um, yeah, I think think we we've got the firepower here for this game. Um, I would say it now. If if we don't beat the Rams, given the state that they are, um, then I'm going to have some cause for concern. I don't think the Vikings lost really concern me. But I think we should be beating the Rams, given given the state and their lack of firepower. Uh, I have got us going in for a 27-20 Niners win. And this is where Lee comes on because he's on mute and goes for a Rams victory. Because we all remember he's done that before, everyone. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, shut up, Paul. No, no. 27-20, did you say? 27-29 as win. Yeah. Did you, did we get an right. answer from Nagy? Don't know, oh. but Nagy's on far the same as me, so he can go last. What was your prediction, Paul? So the Niners will win this one, 28 to 14. So there's nothing much between me and Gareth. When he said 27, I was like, are you looking at my notes, Gareth? Well, yeah, 28 well, 14. Course. I've not gone for a 30 plus victory because I just think maybe without Debo, but I've gone for 28-14, and when we get to the bold predictions, I'll break down my score a little bit mm. more for you. Right, so I'm you, going Nick. for a win. I'm going for a 24-10 win. Mm, nice. So, yeah, we just need uh, Najis now. Yeah, so I don't think you might reply before we finish off the recording. Have you asked oh, him? Probably he's not. Yeah, he'll, he'll reply about quarter past 11 on Sunday night, I think. And say, oh, it just the notification didn't come through. It didn't send. 
See, this is what happens when your star presenter holds out. We've tried to shield him, yeah. chaps. We can't. We've thrown him under the bus. Nadji, yeah. sign that contract and get back on the podcast. It's his incentive to come back to defend himself against all this uh, slanderous um, accusations he's getting. If but not, we, do, we do miss Nadji, and I miss seeing Nadji at the at the watch party. Yeah. So we do yeah, miss him. Definitely. Yeah. It's just if he doesn't give a score by 6 p.m. Sunday, Lee will have to pick a score for you, Nadji. And the last mm. time he did that, I don't think it worked so well in your favour. No, it didn't work. In, well, no, it didn't work in my favour. It worked oh, in his favour. Right, mm -hmm. other way around. Yeah. I think fa failure means you're going for a nil-nil tie, doesn't it? So. Yeah. 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 So um, you, you you threatened some bold predictions there, there, Paul. How bold are you going to go? Well, I'll go offence first. So the first bold prediction is all our points will come from touchdowns. So I've said 28. We're going to score four touchdowns. Kittle. And some extra points. Mason, yeah, the extra point yeah. after. But I, didn't, I meant no field goals. So <laughs> Kittle, Mason, Ayuk and Juice. When I heard Lee mention Juice, Juice earlier, yeah. I thought he's been looking at mine because... He's had about 59 yards in these last couple of games, and if he mm. keeps that pace up, love me a juice touchdown. A lot. 100 yard game from Ayuk, no turnovers from Brock, zero sacks allowed by this offensive <sighs> line. That's, That's my bold predictions for your chaps mm. on offense. Got anything to match that, Lee? Um, possible. Probably not, not on oh. offense. Um, okay, then. What have we got? Jennings. Do you want Jennings? 100 plus yards. Receiving touchdown. Passing touchdown. Oh. You're going there this early. Yeah. Oh. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I think it that's, that's more of a late that season. It has to be something that's pretty much non attainable. So that's what I'm going for. That's my one and only um, ball prediction for offense. I don't think. My oh, actually, I no, think no, I'll tell you what. Tell you what, Brock will have a one one hundred and twenty plus passer rating. Oh, I thought you were going to say a thousand yard game. I was going to say that. I know the beat up, but bloody hell, <laughs> that would be some performance. No, not quite, not quite. How about you, Garth? Offense I've got bullies. I've got. I mean, this this isn't that bold. I've I've got Mason carrying a load again, hundred and twenty yards and a TD. Um, I think we're going to see an Eric Salbert TD. Um, I've got a feeling. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's completely random um, and not actually that bold. But but that's that's all I've got really um, on the offensive side. I haven't really sort of built built up my boldness. Um, it's still still only week three. I I need to work um, on that a bit more. Um, but Paul promised us some defensive boldies as well. I have got a pick six on the on the defensive side. Um, you know, Huff. I've had a pick six against Stafford before, isn't he? So, I think you need to go to Lee first because Lee teased a Borsa ball prediction. So he did. Go on. I want to see whether it's as bold as mine. So go on, Lee. Twiddle yeah, so four, four, four sacks for <laughs> four sacks for Borsa. Nice. I'll take that yeah. one off. I only had two. Do, well, do, do you want all of my defensive yeah, balls? Yeah, or yeah. Just that one. Spill the beans. Okay, Fred. Fred wanted to have um, a sack. A forced fumble and an interception. Yeah, yeah, but given it's Fred, that's that's <laughs> not bold. That's just Fred. yeah. You're right. It's not like yeah. So. Those those are my two. And uh, I'll add to Lee's Warner with a Lenar interception. I think Stafford yeah. turned the ball over a few times. So, but I did have the same uh, Warner prediction. But it has to be done, especially after we gushed over Warner at Patrick Willis last night. So, um, but mistake free football, Gareth. That is the key. Yeah. I think so. I think there's the. This is a good opportunity uh, to set some things right, um, flush whatever that um, any fallout from the Vikings game in terms of how the players are feeling about themselves, um, and and yeah, just just get over that and and start building. I think a bit of momentum um, before the bye week because we do have some bigger games um, coming up on the horizon. Um, and hopefully we are facing the Rams at a good time. And yeah, um, it's a second home, isn't it, Levi South? So it is. Do, do we have any members at SoFi on Sunday? Mm -hmm. I am not sure. Well, if we so we've had people at the first two with the flag there. 
I was going to say, I'll keep an eye on social media. I know some of the content creators are flying our flag. So if you are listening to this pod and you're heading across the pond and if you are going to the game, do let us know. So yeah, Lee, that would be pretty awesome if, we'd, if we could keep up our 100% record. That would be good. Bit of a short one today, but so, thank you, gents. Yeah, oh, so no, I've just had a look. Go on, Lee. I've just... Yeah, sorry. I've just had a look at the uh, the featured post in the group where um, people are saying which games they're going to. The only game that doesn't have anybody saying they're going to it is the Rams game this Sunday. Every other game That's good. has at least 16 one person other games. So, before we finished off, Gareth, I did have some public service announcements. Oh, you do? Like you said, yeah. yeah. Go yeah. on. Go so, on. you did tease about the watch party now. I did. I have had people reach out to me about our awesome community. This isn't going to be that public service announcement. There's too many to mention, but I did just want to say that the acts of kindness, the messages, the posts, the interaction I've seen since the watch party has been amazing. The 49ers social media team, wow. I did not expect us to be shared on their official Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, the footage that those guys have produced. And when me and Lee were talking to the two Niners, they'd come across. So, um, Lee, correct me if I'm wrong with the names. So, Lawrence was the videographer. Yeah. So, he said, Gareth, that it felt surreal for him because he's edited all the previous watch parties from San Francisco. So, he knew who we were, but he'd really pushed to be in London this time so he could do it in real-time information. And I think we saw the difference. We were on the broadcast, both sides of the pond. The NFL official Twitter account with 36 million Ooh. followers tweeted us out. And then the footage they've pulled together with Frank Gore, the flag. So it would be a miss not to end this podcast for me without giving them a big shout out. And then the final one was Talk Sport and Will Gavin. It was nice that he had me on. It was nice that he interacted with the uh, community. And they did feature our flag and they did shout us out on their social media as well. So as Gary Thorpe said quite eloquently today, not a bad week for our little group. <laughs> so, And I don't know whether Lee wanted to say a few words about Gary. That's why I didn't want to uh, steal the thunder. But we will be doing yeah. a watch party show. Yeah, we will. Uh, Gary did an absolutely fantastic job. Um, he Totally. I, I still can't remember why I asked him to take over. I think it's because <laughs> my throat was starting to go at, at the very start of the game. And I needed to go and get a drink. Um, so Gary stood in and he was he was excellent. The 49ers were over the moon with them. Um, I know a few people have turned around and said uh, he was doing some of the wrong chance at the wrong time, but that's it, an easy fix. and um, We can sort that out, no problem. So I think he's got a job for life there. Um, okay. The 49ers have actually turned around and said we, we'd like to use him for all future watch parties. Um, so I think Gary, Gary is well in there. And the rest, the the rest of the admin team staff as well. Like we say, Gareth, it's a team effort, teamwork. Mm. You, you were there, Brett, Neil, Eric, Jessica, Wayne. everybody who was there on the ground, Wayne mm. with with his camera. And like you said, Lee, I don't yeah, know why. I just remember stood on the stairwell because we were helping police the VIP area because the bar staff were a bit overwhelmed by how many people had turned up. And I just saw Gary out the corner of my eye with a microphone. Now, I can say it looks like he's got his jersey back because he had his guard jersey hung good. over the balcony. And I think at the end of the night, there was a little bit of confusion over certain items and whether people thought the Niners had paid for it all. Like, there was two American ladies badgering me for the flag. And I was like, it's not part of the 49ers. Like, I've paid for that with my own money. And I think Gary gave them his flag. So that's why I was part of wanting to mention the kindness of the 49er faithful community. Um, the giveaways, Lee, they wanted to give an authentic feel so there wasn't a giveaway for everybody. And I remember being approached by... Yeah, go on. So, so, breaking news. <laughs> or it might not be because people have known this for over a season now. So when I was in the meeting this morning with um, the, the other Niner Empire presidents, um, Joel Lenore, who is the president of Niner Empire, the, the, the whole thing, um, he actually turned around and said, last season there wasn't a single giveaway at the stadium. Really? So it looks as though they've really? completely stopped doing them. There wasn't a really? single giveaway. Wow. So it's not quite the authentic experience now because you don't get nothing. For going no, in the I just meant like... But the, I know what you mean. 
yeah, like yeah, the I know kettle bobblehead was limited. Um, and I just wanted to say I was approached, Gareth, by um, a chap and he had his 10, 11 year old son. And he was like, look, I'm not trying to be cheeky, but is there any bobbleheads kicking about? And I went upstairs and obviously some people had some spare. So we were able to kind of pass them over. And I will name names on you the show, but because this is the first time all three of us have got together, I just wanted to shout all those guys out. And then Lee. Patrick Willis, baby. I'm still on cloud Patrick nine, Gareth. So, so be- before we move on, Paul, Paul just reminded us. So I did receive an email from the 49ers to say how impressed they were with the full leadership team, we call it, of the 49ers of the UK. Um, they were over the moon, the types of things we did. Obviously, we actually gave um, Franco a bodyguard. We made sure that day he could get <laughs> in, get out of the event. Um, we supplied Gary. Gary did the emceeing when my voice just completely went. Um, and all the other stuff. I mean, we, we kind of policed the whole of the upstairs, the VIP. Whenever, whenever Frank wanted to just watch the game, anybody that approached him, we said, look, leave it until the end of the quarter, then go and speak to him because he wants to watch the game. So they were over the moon with all that, as well as everything else that we, we arranged, basically greeting everybody as they came through the door. Um, so yeah, they were very happy, and they've sent their their praises. Great to hear. And, that's and very yeah, cool. yeah. I think just just for me, thanks to everyone who who had some nice words about the pod, and just great to see uh, a very large uh, pub in London, absolutely full of Niners fans, having a good time, making new friends, and en- enjoying the game for three quarters let's say um not what so we wanted but thing. there we are one the more ga- thing the about the always went all the i love it i love yeah, it yeah. Always <laughs> one more thing. so so th- this has only just come to light in the last uh, hour or so um but I, i've had a member uh, um, a quite well-known member reach out to us and ask do you have a contact for the pub it turns out that um they've been overcharging for drinks so when I've checked my my uh, balance as well, my uh, credit card balance, there was a lot more on there than what I paid for or what I bought on the Sunday night. Oh. Because people kept on buying me drinks pretty much all night long. So I only bought the very first drink. or Sorry, I bought two drinks that night on the Sunday night. And I've somehow, uh, and th- these are like pints of cider, and I've somehow spent £35. Did you get food? Because I must have met. I did get food. That's food completely separate. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure because I, yes. I didn't get a chance. No, to no. Eat so the food, there. the food was obvious because I remember what the prices were. So I can see those two, right. but then there's others where it looks as though it's been double charged. Hmm. Probably. So I don't know if there's been something checking. wrong. Yes. So that's what I'm going to say. I, I don't know if there's been something wrong with the because uh, they did they did say it earlier on the day they're having issues with the Wi-Fi. And it was taking ages for card payments to go through. And I wonder if there's something happened where it, it's taken it twice. Mm. There's, there's or, been a communication issue. Or through the app. It was definitely, yes. There, there, there was definitely twice twice the amount of money taken that I was expecting to be ta- taken. So it's worthwhile checking your bank mm. balances. Important PSA. And, and Hopefully, I, I don't think it was done on purpose, fixed. by the way. Yeah, I don't think it was done on purpose. I, I think there's been a um, some issue with the system because, like I said, I mean, we'd been in there on the Sunday afternoon um, for the for the F1. We'd been in there on the Saturday afternoon as well, and, and I'm sure on the Saturday afternoon they had problems with the card machine as well. It was just taking ages to do anything. And we need to shout out at the end. I was told by a couple of members, Gareth, believe it or not, they listen to the pod, they watch the live but they're not quite sure where to find us on social media. So I was very apologetic and said, we will have a word with the social media manager. He's clearly not doing his failed, job. Failed his, in, so his, in his job. if you are but listening to this podcast, we're so well you're not hidden. quite sure where to find us. So search for at 49 Faithful UK on wherever you get your social media platforms. Failing that, reach out to me at Paul underscore Hope 10. I will happily point you in the right direction. It is a 9.25 game this Sunday. It's on Dizan. It's not blacked out because it's not on Sky. And the game day thread on Discord, I have no doubt Nadji will be drumming up the support for that, Gareth, because that's his baby. Mm. But yes, if you're not sure where to find us, 
49 a faithful UK. Stick that in Google. I assure you, nothing dodgy comes up unless you put Brett Sinclair's name afterwards. Other than that, Gareth, that is all that I had to say for today. I think that uh, that is a good place uh, to wrap it up. I shall look forward to the uh, in-depth watch party uh, show. I think we've, we've barely scratched the surface there. Um, a huge thanks to the 49ers and huge thanks to uh, Frank Gore for making the way over as well. So the last couple of thank yous. Um, and we did touch on it. Um, huge thanks to Wayne for all the photos uh, and the massive photo upload that he's just done. We, we are lucky that pretty much, I think everybody is there can find a photo of themselves and, and the people they are with on Facebook and it's, and it's professional quality uh, photo as well. So thank you, Wayne. So thank you, gents. Been a pleasure as always. Thank you to everyone who listens and watches the show. Don't forget to check out our YouTube channel, unless you're watching it now, in which case you already know about it. Um, but particularly, you can check out the Patrick Willis show um, when he hijacked 49 The Faithful UK live. Um, and while you're there at YouTube, why not subscribe? It is what Patrick Willis would do. Hopefully, maybe. Uh, we could do with a get right game and the Rams have been charitable hosts when we've needed a win. So let's hope they remember their manners we get back to uh, winning ways. Enjoy the game and go Niners. Patrick Willis, baby. Bang, bang, nan again. We love the San Francisco 49ers deep in the heart. Like Joe Montana in the corner, deep Clark. Garrison Hurst, stiff form going 99. Don't get it twisted. One and all with prime time. John Taylor, Jerry Rice down the